Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you John Garfield and Claire Trevor in Dust Be My Destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When Mark Twain said that it's better to be a young June bug than an old peacock, he expressed my sentiments exactly. But sometimes we old peacocks use the June bugs pretty roughly when they're trying to conquer the world in their own youthful fashion. Fortunately, most of them bounce right back and try again. But when they don't bounce back, well, that's why a story called Dust Be My Destiny was written, why Warner Brothers made a motion picture out of it, and why we're giving you this play tonight with John Garfield in his original screen role, co-starred with Claire Trevor. Dust Be My Destiny is the drama of a young man with a chip on his shoulder, just daring anybody to knock it off. And it takes a girl to do that job. A girl who's in love with him. And then it's the two of them against the world. When a boy and a girl in love face the world in a fair fight, they usually lick it and make a thrilling story for us into the bargain. It's a very different kind of play that we're presenting tonight. Something quite off the beaten track. But I believe it's on the right track for your enjoyment. Just as you're on the right track if you use Lux Toilet Soap. And the number of people who do use it is pretty good evidence of the way American women feel about our product. I'm afraid this theater, I mean the actual building where the plays go on, just isn't big enough to bring you all backstage. But I wish that were possible, so that every one of you could see what happens back here from the minute the first rehearsal is called until the play begins. All the care and thought and work that goes into these productions has one purpose, your entertainment. It's the best way we know of showing our gratitude for your loyalty to Lux Toilet Soap. And now, for your entertainment, we raise the curtain on the first act of Dust Be My Destiny, <clears throat> starring John Garfield as Joe Bell and Claire Trevor as Mabel. Versus Joseph Bell. Will the state's attorney continue, please? Joe Bell, age 23, is on trial for his life. In the hot, crowded courtroom of a Midwestern town, he faces a jury of his peers. Twelve men who hold his destiny in their hands. Twelve men who must decide whether Joe Bell shall live or die. And the state will prove that Joe Bell, in spite of his youth, is a seasoned, hardened criminal with a long record behind him, who, when arrested, was wielding a deadly weapon, and who, when he escaped from the county work farm with this girl a short six months ago, reached the pinnacle of his career in crime, the cold-blooded murder of the prison foreman. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state will contend and prove that for this crime, Joe Bell deserves no mercy and merits the supreme penalty to be hanged by the neck until he is dead. For seven days, the trial has dragged on. And now at last, Joe Bell is on the stand. He's bitter, moody, and defiant. Now, Joe, let's go back to the night you escaped from the work farm. You said before that... Just a second. If you're in a hurry, mister, maybe I can save you a lot of time. I didn't kill that foreman. The last time I saw him, he was running after us, chasing us. And he stumbled and fell down. Oh, well, if you didn't kill him, why didn't you come back and clear yourself when you found out you were accused of murder? Because I served time once before for something I didn't do. I told them the truth and they threw me in prison. They wouldn't believe me then, so why should I expect them to believe me now? Young man, this is an American court. Under our laws, a man is considered innocent until he is proved guilty. You're being tried by an American jury of your equals. Equal? They don't think I'm their equals. Why should they? I'm not a responsible member of their society. I'm a bindle stiff, a tramp. What I feel or what happens to me don't bother them that much. I'm a nobody with a capital N. And if I do butt into their lives, 
They got one answer. Go back where you come from. This case isn't going to be decided on whether or not I committed this murder, but on who I am. Order! Order! This jury will base its verdict on only one factor, what they consider to be the truth. Yeah? I've been sitting here a whole week watching this guy twist the truth into a rope around my neck. Ah, then you admit everything that's been brought out in this trial is the truth. As far as you'd let him tell it, yes. Is it or isn't it? All right, yes, it is. Let's get this thing over with. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state rests its case on that admission. Just a minute, Joe. Just a minute. What do you want? As your representative here in this court, Joe, I'd like to ask you to tell more of your story than just that. I don't know what it'd be. Well, why not start from the first? You said you served time in prison once for something you didn't do. I did. Tell us about it, Joe. It was a bum rap, that's all. What happened? I gave the state 16 months and 13 days out of my life. That's what happened. And you don't have to believe me. It's spread out on the record books. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about it in your own words, Joe? Go on. Well, they threw me in prison for a robbery I had any nothing to do with. And I sat there. Sixteen long months. One day, the bull come by my cell, the guard. He said the warden wanted to see me, something important. I couldn't figure out what it was. Thought it was probably another bum rap. Come in, Bill. Sit down. Well? Bill, I can't say you've been a model prisoner. You've been rebellious and unruly. I've disciplined you. But I want you to know I've just acted in the line of duty. I'm a warden, Bill, not a judge. It was not my business to determine your guilt or innocence. What are you getting at, Warden? Bell, you're free. Free? I've just had word that the burglary for which you've been serving time has been solved. The real criminal has just made a full confession. I'm sorry, Bell. You're sorry? Well, you didn't serve time. I did. I'm sorry I was chump enough to think the cops would believe on nobody like me. When I told them I was only trying to help a guy who was shot, I should have kept my nose out of trouble. But don't worry, Warden. I'm smartened up now. Because no matter what happens or who gets hurt, from now on, Joe Bell runs the other way. What happened after you got out, Joe? Will you tell us? Ah, uh, nothing much. I started doing what I've always been doing, hopping freights, just drifting. Pretty soon, I picked up with a couple of other bindle stiffs. Kids, Jimmy and Hank. We were heading out to the wheat fields on a freight, looking for work. But there's a law against riding free on a train. They pick you up for it and shove you in the jug. That's what happened to us. They pulled us off the cars, took us before the magistrate. You know what the charge was. We were tramps, bindle stiffs. And they ain't got any use for guys like that. Step up here, please. You. What's your name? His name's Jimmy. Jimmy Glenn. I asked him. Where do you live, Glenn? No place. Tramps, huh? Yeah, traveling all over the country looking for jobs means being tramps. That's us. You? What's your name? Joe Bell. You were with these other two? I just said I was. Don't lose your head, Joe. What's the difference? I've been in courts before. I know what the answer is for guys like us. Quiet! You don't think he's going to give us a home and a job, do you? Listen, you, if you're one of those kids that thinks the world owes you a living... I don't think the world owes me a living, but I think it owes me a right to make one. And let me tell you... Quiet! That... I'll do the talking in this here court. You ever been arrested before? Sure, lots of times. What for? For not being able to run fast enough. You're charged with disturbing the peace, vagrancy, trespassing, breaking and entering a railroad car. Judge, all we wanted was to get guilty to the Guilty or kid. not guilty? Look, Judge, I don't care about me, but my brother, Jimmy here, he's just a kid. The law's the law. 30 days of the work farm for all of you. But, Judge, you've got to listen. You've got to. Don't beg him. Don't beg him. That fixes it. 90 days for you. Contempt of court. Line up outside the barn. You're about to learn farming. Okay, Charlie. Yeah, I don't get this farm work. What's the matter, buddy? Well, I tell the guard I don't like farming, so he puts a pair of overalls on me and he says I'm a farmer. He's nuts. You think he is? Where did you see Charlie the foreman? He's a first-class screwball. When he gets drunk, he tries to feed the cow's liquor and starts chewing grass himself. You're kidding. Shh, here he comes. Before you go to work here, I want to say a few words to the new men. I'm a nice guy. I'm a bad guy. See, he's a screwball. I'm just showing you both sides of my nature. 
You can have whichever you want. Most of you are in here because you're tramps. You're tramps because you were too dumb to learn anything when you were kids. Well, you're going to learn now, the hard way. And you're going to learn the most wonderful thing in all the world. Farming. You think he's dude? Wait till you see the cow. You knew when step out in front. Yo. Ever done any farming? Yes, sir. But my brother here, he ain't very strong. Little he... guy, huh? Close to the ground. Good for planting. Yes. You look healthy enough. Hay pitching for you. Yes, sir. All right. Who's next? I guess you mean me. Yeah. I guess maybe I do. What would you like to do? Anything but farming. And just to straighten you out, I wasn't too dumb to learn when I was a kid. <clears throat> maybe that'll hold you. The first thing you learn at this work farm is to keep your mouth shut. The barn's for you if the cows will stand for it. The rest of you guys get going. And remember, I got two sides to my nature. Stand still, cow, will you? Now, look, I don't know nothing about you, and you know nothing about me. So we start off even, see? I got two sides to my nature, see? I'm a nice guy, I'm a bad guy. Now, be a good moo cow and don't try any tricks and we'll get along swell. But get nasty and I'll take this bucket and I'll shove it right down your throat. You got that? Mm -hmm. What's so funny? <laughs> oh, gosh, you're dumb. You're on the wrong side of the cow. What's the difference? To me, one side of a cow is as good as another. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look out, he's got a kick. <laughs> all right, all right, I can do without kibitzes. I told you you were on the wrong side. <laughs> Will you stop that cackling? Well, I can't help it. It's the first time I ever saw a mule trying to milk a cow. Ain't you smart? Now flap your wings and lay me an egg. Well, I was only trying to help you. You don't have to be so fresh. Once and for all, will you beat it? You annoy me. Mm. Hey, wait a minute. Slapping people in the mouth seems to be a habit around here. Well, you're too free with your tongue. You're too free with your hands, and I don't like people laughing at me. Yes, but if you'd only... What's going on here? Maple, I told you enough times to get the eggs before these tramps come in here. I'm sorry, Dad. It, it won't happen again. Get out of here. All right. Now, look, you. I feel sorry for you being in here. That's the nice side of my nature. Now, this is the bad side. What you're going through today will seem like a Sunday school strawberry festival if you don't stay away from that girl. Do you understand? Stay away from her. Mister, it'll be a pleasure. Just tell her to stay away from me. Mabel, I certainly hope that what you're trying to do for Joe Bell is going to help him. I think he deserves the break, Warden. He doesn't know anything about farming. Oh, you should see him try to milk a cow. <laughs> so I thought if you could give him a job driving, it would be better for him and better for the farm. I'll have a talk with Bell. I don't see why it can't be worked out if what you say about him is true. It wasn't fair of my stepfather to punish him. Charlie was probably drunk, as usual. Oh, no, he wasn't. Really, he wasn't. He gets those spells. He's a sick man, you know. Mabel, there's no sense fooling ourselves about Charlie any longer. I'd like to see him hold his job here, but there's his medical report. Tell him if he continues this way, he's through. Oh, but he's really sick. Will you tell him? Yes, I'll tell him. And, and Warden, thanks for helping Joe Bell. What a racket you got, Joe. What do you mean, racket? Gee, Joe, it's sure swell you got a job driving a truck. Sure is, Joe. Congratulations. Wish Jimmy had it. What do you got on the warden, Joe? The warden, fellas, happens to be a very good judge of human nature. He says to me, my boy, you are the executive type. Making little ones out of big ones is not in your alley. So because I'm only doing a short stretch and he needs my executive ability, he puts me on the steering committee. And here I am driving a truck. <laughs> <laughs> short swell, Joe. Pretty short. Excuse me. Hey, where do you think you're going? Into town. Not with me, Ange. You're a jinx. I told you once before, stay away from me. Say, look out. All house. right, all right. What are you hanging around here for? Get in the truck. we got to get to town. Come on, snap it up. All right, Bell, let's go. Hey, uh, wait a second, Bell. Wait a second. I want to tell you something. Yeah? You got a pretty lucky break when she went to the warden and got you off that rock pile. She? Yeah, Mabel. And if you want to keep that break, stay in line. This is the last time she'll ever go over my head again. Isn't it? Answer me, isn't it? Yes, Dad. 
All right. Get started, Bill. Look kind of heavy, don't you think I oh. ought to carry him? Oh, you'd better get back to the truck before my stepfather sees you. Well, the guard said it was okay. Here, give him to me. Well, I can... Give him to me. Him. Besides, I... Uh, I wanted to talk with you for a second. I... I want to tell you what a white thing you did getting me off that rock pile. I... Uh, I didn't expect you to do that to me. Joe, you're taking an awful chance talking to me. I kind of figured you wrong. I thought you'd enjoy my getting paid off for being such a wise guy. Enjoy it? How? Give me that big one. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, there's a truck. Uh, why should I enjoy seeing you on a rock pile? Well, most people like to watch other people get wrapped around. You see, most of the times in my I life... I told you two to keep away from each other. The guard told me to help her. I give the orders around here. How many times have I told you? Don't dare, please. Maybe that'll teach you to stay away from him. Don't ever let me catch you hitting her. I'll kill you. Joe, Joe, don't. You'll lose everything. never had a chance. Yeah. Yeah, I'll never give him a chance from here on. Oh, oh Joe. Joe. Joe, stop chewing on that hay. I can't help it. I'm happy. When I'm happy, I have to chew on hay. <laughs> Swell night, ain't it? Mm. Joe, I've been adding and subtracting. You've only got 22 days left here. Um, I'm going to ask you to do me a big favor. Yeah? What? Say that... Say that you love me. I mean, say I love you, and, and don't sound so ashamed when you say it. Listen, you've been asking me that for six weeks, and I've been saying it for six weeks. What more do you want? Well, those six weeks were just rehearsing. Now I want a real good performance. Ah, oh, say it, Joe. All right, I love you. No. Say it without the all right. I love you, Mabel. You may not know it, Joe, but we're engaged. Don't worry, I know it. Gee, can't you just see the papers tomorrow? The Rosedale County Work Farm takes pleasure in announcing the engagement <laughs> of its leading citizen, Joe Bell, to Mabel Alden. Please omit the flowers. <laughs> 22 days, Joe. Just think. We better start getting ideas. I got ideas. Ever since I've been a kid, I've been on the move. Looking, looking, always looking. I never knew for what. It got so I kind of talked myself into thinking that that's the way I'd finally wind up. That even after I die, my corpse would go right on hopping freight. Don't talk like that. Not anymore, I won't. I feel different now. I feel like, like I'd finally found what I wanted. What? A place to hang my hat. It's that simple. And it looks like we got it now. From now on, Mabel, we stay put. We? Oh, gosh, that sounds swell, Joe. I'll get a job somewhere. I'll start a bank. I'll write a book. Writing ain't so tough. Gee, you think so, Joe? Oh, sure. There's lots of things I can be. An engineer, a congressman, or a radio announcer. <sighs> then, boy, will we have a place to hang our hats. A 15-room house with a special wing fixed up like a boxcar for all the bindle stiffs. And it'll be a classy layout, see? And we'll have... Hey, what are you crying about? I can't help it, Joe. <laughs> I want to laugh. But all these years, I've been praying for something like this to happen. To have somebody I can talk to and hold on to. And, and now it's happening. Instead of laughing, I'm crying. I can't figure it out. Mabel. What? If, um, if I say it again, can I kiss you again? Oh, sure. I love you, Mabel. Who is that over there? Joe. Charlie. Take it easy, Mabel. Who is it? Oh, yeah, I thought so. I thought it was you, too. Look, Charlie, you got to understand. Sure, sure, I understand. <laughs> Listen, we were just sitting here. Yeah, you were, huh? Let go of my arms. Let go. Charlie, I don't want no trouble with you. If you give me a chance to explain... All right. I'll... All right, I'll... I'll give you a chance. Let go of me. Okay. You see, Charlie, it's because... Joe, look now... out! You, you rat! Don't hit him, Joe, don't! No! Oh! Told him I didn't want no trouble. Oh, Joe, what are we going to do? Come on, let's scram out of here. Where are we going? What's the difference? Come on. Come back here. 
Come back. He's coming after us. Don't stop to look back. Come on. Stop. Do you hear me? Stop. When I get my hands on you, I'll... I'll... Joe. Joe, wait. Come on, I tell you. No, look. Something's happened to him. He's keeled over. Joe, he's... He's just laying there on the ground. Let's go back, Joe. And have him stick another ear on my stretch. Put me back on that rock pile. Not me, they won't. What else can you do? Start running like I always do. And me? You stay here. I'll send for you. No, I'm going with you. No, you're not. You don't know what it's like going from one place to another. It's no worse than staying here. Joe, you can't leave me. I'll go wherever you want me to go. You'll have to take an awful lot of chances. I love you. I'll take any chance you will. Okay. Come on. Will the defendant please continue? Go ahead with your story, Joe. Well, Mabel and me took it on the lamb, all right. We got across the state line early the next morning, landing in the little burg there. First thing we headed for was the city hall. We figured on getting married. The place wasn't open, and while we waited, a guy come by looking for a couple, just like Mabel and me. He gave us a spiel, promised that if we get married on the stage of the Bijo Theater for a stunt, he'd outfit us complete. Ring, license, and apartment rent-free for a month. Furniture, clothes, everything. <laughs> I should have known better, but I fell for it. It looked like a good bet. The wedding was swell for everybody but us. People thought it was funny. They were wisecracking, laughing, and poking cameras at us all through the ceremony, taking pictures. They made suckers out of us, all right. Plenty. You see, I figure a guy gets married only once. And it ought to be pretty. Something almost sacred. But ours wasn't. We tried to kid about it all the way home to our new apartment. But it was no go. We were sitting there listening to the radio. Looks like my ring is, is turning black, Joe. Already? That's all right, honey. As soon as I get a job, I'll buy you one with a big diamond in the center. Gosh. I wouldn't have felt so bad if there had been at least one orange blossom stuck around the stage somewhere. Come here. Look, Mabel, I don't care about the wedding or the ring turning black or people laughing. As long as I got you legal and everything. Oh, Joe. Then I'm satisfied. We interrupt our program to bring you a news report. Charles Jarrett, foreman of the county work farm, was murdered this afternoon by Joe Bell, a convict. Joe! Quiet. Joe Bell fled the scene of the crime with Mabel Alden, stepdaughter of the murdered man. The entire town of Rosedale is aroused, and posses are scarring the countryside searching for murderer. Keep tuned to this thing. Charlie's dead. A murder rap. But, but you didn't kill him. Oh, come on, we'll figure that out later. But you didn't do it, Joe. You know you didn't. Who's going to believe me? Everybody, when you tell them what happened. Yeah, that's all I got to do. Just tell them what happened, and they'll believe me. Look, Mabel, as far as they're concerned, I'm hanging by the neck already. I'm a nobody. Come on. Get your things together, quick. But what are you going to do? Do what I've always done every time I got in a spot. Run. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars John Garfield and Claire Trevor will bring us Act Two of Dust Be My Destiny. Now, just for a minute, let's listen in on a very feminine conversation that two young housewives are having over a cup of afternoon tea. Sue, you're certainly looking well. That blouse you have on is awfully becoming. But I hope you don't mind my saying so. I think it's your skin. It always looks so lovely and fresh. Oh, I guess it's my daily beauty facials. Facials? <laughs> so that's it. Of course, I wouldn't have the time. Now, don't leap to conclusions, dear. You can give yourself a Lux Soap Facial right in your own home. And it costs practically nothing. Lux Soap Facials? I heard about them on the radio. How the famous Hollywood stars use them regularly. So, I said to myself, I guess that Lux Soap Care must be something pretty special. I've been giving myself a Lux Soap Facial every night now for weeks. Tell me how you take one, Sue. You just pat the lather very lightly into your skin. You rinse with warm water, then with cool then you pat your face dry with a soft towel. Really, Mary, your skin feels so smooth and soft afterwards. Lux Soap has active lather, you know, that does a really thorough job. Oh, it sounds easy. I guess I'll start today. The point is, do it regularly. No matter how tired I am, I never neglect my Lux Soap facial at bedtime. That little conversation is typical of what clever women everywhere are saying about Lux Soap active lather facials. 
Out here in Hollywood, famous screen stars depend on this gentle Lux Soap care. They say Lux Soap facials do a thorough job of removing dust, dirt, and stale cosmetics. Leave skin feeling smooth and looking so fresh. A Lux Soap facial takes only a few minutes. But those few minutes of Lux Soap care every day pay rich returns. You'll be delighted with the way Lux Soap's active leather facials help keep your skin looking fresh and lovely, the way you want it to be. Get three cakes of this gentle complexion soap that nine out of ten screen stars use. See what it can do for you. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Must Be My Destiny, starring John Garfield as Joe Bell and Claire Trevor as Mabel. Case of the People versus Joseph Bell. Will the defendant please resume his testimony? Joe Bell, on trial for his life, continues his story. The courtroom is hushed and expectant. Mabel Alden leans forward and watches anxiously. Joe is tense as he straightens in the hard chair. His eyes, dull as rivets, stare out over the heads of the lawyers, the police, and the courtroom audience. He doesn't see Mabel's reassuring smile as he begins to talk. After Mabel and me heard the radio say a posse was out after us, we blew town, quick. I don't know how long we were traveling, too long. We were tired and hungry most of the time. Mabel was taking it pretty big and once almost quit on me. I wouldn't have blamed her. But if she had, I'd killed myself. One night late, we ducked into a little cafe on the edge of town. We hadn't eaten for two solid days. I ordered up a big meal apiece, and we downed it like that. You ever taste pie like this, Mabel? It's just a... Hey, what's the matter? Joe, how are we going to pay? Who says we're going to pay? Oh, Joe, we have to. You go over by the door and keep it open in case we have to start running. I'll do the rest. Hey, mister. Sure. You want something else? No, uh, just a business proposition. I'll toss you for the check. Eh? What do you say? You heard me. I'll toss you. Double or nothing. <laughs> a smart boy, eh? With the butcher, I don't toss. With the baker, I don't toss. Why should I toss with you? Police fought to pay me one dollar and a quarter, please. Supposing I told you I ain't got a buck and a quarter. Supposing I told you you and your girlfriend got to work out for the dollar and a quarter. Supposing I told you it'd be a pleasure. All right, honey, roll up your sleeves. We go to work at last. Hey, wait for the minute. I got the proposition. My name is Nick. Yeah, honey, this is Nick. I'm pleased to meet you. Hello, Nick. Uh, tell me, uh, you two are hooked up? Uh, married, eh? Oh, no, no, he's my brother. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, not so good. That makes it for two rooms and a board. Look, Nick, if you're figuring on hiring us, we're good workers. You won't be sorry. Honest, you won't. I'm a handy guy. I can fix things. What do you say? Give us a break. Well, I don't know. For two rooms and a board... I'll uh... toss you for it. Okay, you toss. Yeah, only I ain't got a coin. Uh, here's a coin. Uh, you say it. Um, heads. Heads it is, Mabel. We hang up our hats. you and Joe to take off today. <laughs> I know it, Nick. Joe's out, and as soon as I finish up with these dishes, I'm going to. Ah, uh, that's some more like it. Joe had to get down to the bank and deposit a little more in our savings. You know, Nick, we got $72 as of today. Ah, uh, that's nice. I like it for to see young kids uh, save money. And uh, now maybe you and your husband... My can... husband? What? <laughs> you don't fool old Nick, eh? You make uh, too much love. Ah... <sighs> <laughs> Nick, you're okay. Ah, uh, go on now, go on. You are through with the dish. All right. We'll open up in the morning. You sleep late. You betcha. I sure get spoiled. 
Nick, what is it? Ah, coming, coming. Oh, you, yeah, Nick. Uh, you right now? Gentlemen, gentlemen, what can I give the police today? I feel a real hokey-dokey. It's on the house. Sorry, Nick, sorry. We haven't got time. We're paying you a business call. Where's the two kids that work for you? Uh, which two kids, you mean, Lieutenant? Come on, Nick. Stop playing Foxy. We've seen those two kids working around here a dozen times. Uh, what for you want them, Lieutenant? Got a warrant for their arrest. Here, here. Take a look at this circular. See that guy? Yeah. And the dame? Yeah. Well, they're the two who's been working for you. Now, don't kid me. This is serious. They're wanted for murder. <laughs> murder? Hey, the circular thing must be crazy. Where are they? They and don't quit work stalling. here. They don't work here no more. They don't? Since when? Since last week. They come in one day and quit. Huh, where'd they live? I don't know. I got no interest where they live. Come early in the morning and go late at night. That's all I know. Okay, Nick. We'll find them ourselves. Nick got to me before the cops did. He closed up the cafe and caught me at the bank. I drew out our savings and headed for home. I was going to get Mabel and go on the run again. But I was too late. The cops had pinched her. They were waiting there for me. She saw me coming first and yelled. Like a dope, I didn't get wise. But when they threw a couple of lead slugs at me, I ducked plenty fast. I laid low for the rest of that day working out a plan. And late that night, I bought a camera and went over to see Nick. Nick, Nick, let me in. Hey, who is it? Hey, Joe. Oh, Joe, come in, come in. Hello, Nick. They got the maple. Yeah, I know. I thought that maybe you were scrum. No, no, look. I got no time to talk. I got to move fast. Joe, what are you going to do? I'm going to spring Mabel out of jail. You're crazy, Joe. They will grab you, too. Can't help it. I got a plan. Will you help me? Oh, sure, sure. I will help you. Come on, then. Close up the joint. I'll get your car and meet you around in the front. Look, Nick. Don't start the motor again until we come out. Sure, I understand. Where's my camera? Right there. Good. If I don't come out of that jail, you beat it. Good luck, Joe. I'll see you soon, I hope. You the jailer around here? Yeah, what you want? Pass to the woman's ward. I got to get some pictures of the Alden dame. I don't remember you. Who you with? National Press. Wait a minute. One of your guys took some pictures already. Yeah, and some drinks afterwards. Busted up his plate, so they told me to beat her over here and get some new shots. All right, come on. I'll take you back there myself. Sorry to bother you, but a guy will go for that hard liquor now and then. Yeah. Do you know that guy that took those pictures? Yeah. He spoiled the films, huh? Yeah, all right, you don't have to worry. I'll take care of you. Say, that'd be swell. You really will? Sure, sure. Well, there's the matron over there. She's got the keys for the dame's cell. Hello, Luke. What'll it be? More pictures? Yeah, this guy's from the national press. The other cameraman got stiff and spoiled his films. He wants more pictures of the Alden dame. And of me and you, too. He does, huh? You want pictures of her, don't you? Well, I sure do, if you'll let me. Certainly. Alden! Hey, Alden! Can't you leave me alone? Hi, I... Miss Alden. Oh. Come on out and get your picture taken again, dearie. Sure. Why not? All right, Matron. You and the jailer. Get your hands up. I'm taking her out of here. Look out, Luke. He's got a gun. Put that gun away, mister. Get smart. Don't move an inch. She goes out of here if I have to kill everyone in the place. Get their keys, Mabel. Hand them over, Matron. You heard him. You're breaking jail. You can't. I can't, huh? Get in that cell, both of you. Give me the keys, Mabel. They'll catch you sure as shoot. Shut up. You're making a Come on, honey. Let's go. Oh, Joe. Take it easy, kid. Nick's waiting for us. Joe. Joe, I knew you'd come for me. I just knew it. Well, there we were, on the run again. Nick took us out to the edge of town, and we said goodbye to him. That Nick was a right guy. Me and Mabel owe him plenty. Anyhow, this time I put a thousand miles between us and the cops. We landed in a town out west, and I hunted for work on a newspaper. I thought I'd have a chance with my camera. We stuck around for over, over a month, but didn't get no break. Pretty soon, we were down to our last dime. Joe? Oh, gee, I was getting worried about you. You've been gone all day. Yeah, I know. What happened? Nothing, nothing. I've been having newspaper in town, some of them twice. Oh, Joe. They got all the pictures they want. They got all the cameramen they want. I haven't got enough experience. Come back Tuesday. No, don't come back. You can't see the editor. You can't see anybody. Joe. Joe, did you ever stop to figure that we got a long time ahead? We're young now. 
Yeah? You get old being on the run pretty fast. I'm 19, you're 23. Look, why don't we go back? What if they do give us 20 years? I'd be 39, you'd be 43. That's not so old. Forget it. You could get life, too. Or death. Oh, they wouldn't do that. I don't believe it. I do. But we can't go on like this. It's not right. We're married. We've got a right to have a decent home and, and kids. What'd you say about kids? I said, well, we've got a right to have them. Well, we haven't. And don't forget it. Mabel. What? Tell me the truth. Yes or no? No. I'm glad of that. You ain't got no right to have kids born with two strikes on them at the start. Yes, Joe, oh, yes. Look, I, I'm going out. Where? Uh, for a walk. I need some fresh air. I'll go with you. No, no, I, I want to go alone. But, Joe, you just got home. I don't see... Joe. Yeah? You've got your gun. That's right. You're going to pull a stick up. What about it? I won't let you do it. You don't know what you're doing. Let do... go. Don't you realize we're down to our last dime? You'll get a job. You will. Sure. There's a million of them around. I won't let you steal. What would you rather have me do? Beg? Yes. Yeah? Well, not me. At least I still got my self-respect. Anybody can beg, but it takes courage to steal. Oh, no, Joe. No, it doesn't. You're wrong. Listen to me, Joe. You can't go. Don't you see what you're doing? You're proving to them that they're right and you're wrong, that you don't deserve a break. Don't you see, Joe, you're giving up. That's a lot of talk. I don't care what we go through. If we have to starve anything, I'll stick. I'll stick as long as I feel you're right, that you're honest. But if you do this, you don't have to come back. You... you mean that? Yes. Okay, Mabel. You're... you're going? I can't hold you? No, you can't. All right, Joe. I once told you that any time you felt like going, you could... Get up and go. Yeah, yeah. I remember. So long, Mabel. (laughs) Joe, is that you? Yeah. It's a nice night for a walk. I'm sorry you didn't come with me. Joe, look at me. Joe. I couldn't do it, Mabel. I I couldn't go through with it. Oh, darling. It it wasn't in me. It just wasn't. I knew you couldn't rob anybody. I knew you couldn't. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille and our stars John Garfield and Claire Trevor will bring us Act Three of Dust Be My Destiny. I have a letter here that I think will interest the men in our audience as well as the ladies, too. It's a letter of complaint. Now, since we've been getting other letters with just about the same criticism, we thought we'd read this one to our audience. It's from a Mr. Lewis Moore of Austin, Texas. He says, I listen just about every Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater... And I've often thought to myself, why don't you tell the men in your audience what a swell soap Lux is? Tell them what a wow of a bath soap it makes. A man likes a soap that gives real lather. And even with hard water, you get a wonderful quick lather with Lux soap. I've heard a lot of men say they're partial to that soap. Thank you for that letter, Mr. Moore. We're very grateful to you. And from now on, while we're telling the women in our audience why Lux toilet soap is the soap for them, we'll try not to forget that men are people, too. And I hope you ladies have been listening attentively tonight because I'm pretty sure the men in your families will enjoy using Lux toilet soap. You see, there's a very good reason why they'll say it makes a wonderful bath soap. It's because Lux toilet soap has rich, smooth, active lather that carries away perspiration and every trace of dust and dirt. Leaves a man feeling like a million. And remember, it's a luxury soap at a budget price. Just a few cents a cake is all this fine soap costs. Why not get a supply of Lux toilet soap for the whole family tomorrow? It's hard milled, you know, so it lasts and lasts. Yes, Lux to- toilet soap is really thrifty. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of Dust Be My Destiny. <laughs> Joe Bell on the witness stand is hard and indifferent. He scarcely seems to realize that his life is at stake. The spectators strain forward, eager to hear every detail as Joe Bell continues his story. So I didn't pull the stick up. 
I don't ask you to believe that. You probably don't anyway. But I didn't. Anyway, a few days later, I took the camera down to Hockett. We had to eat. As I started to go in the place, a burglar alarm began sounding off at the bank across the street. Two cops run by me, guns out. I run after them, just as three mugs came blasting their way out of the bank. I ducked behind a parked car and snapped a picture. The lead really began to fly. One of the cops stopped a bullet, and I caught a shot of him falling and the guy who did it. When the mugs piled into their car, I got another. It was a wonder no one took a crack at me. Well, when it was over, I hot-footed it down to a newspaper, the journal. I had a great idea, Mike. Journal. Just a minute, I'll connect you. Daily Journal. Hey, kid, the editor in? You back again. I gotta see the editor. Don't you ever take no for an answer. No, I don't. Hey, come back here. You can't go in there. Yeah, yeah, I saw the pictures of the bank robbery. They look like scenic postcards. Now, look, will you go get me some action shots? I can buy postcards of this city at a penny apiece. Hiya, Mr. Leonard. What do you want? I'm busy. I want to speak to you about... Weren't you in here looking for a job last week? Yeah. I thought I told you yeah, then... you told me I didn't have enough experience. Well, I got something better than experience. In this camera, I got pictures. What do you expect to have in a camera? Hot coffee? I got pictures of the bank robbery. I was there from the start. If this is a gag... All right, all right. Come on, what's your price? What do you want for him if they come out? A job. If you've got what you say you got... You can have my insurance policy. Let's get into that developing room. Okay, Pete. How much longer on those pictures? Can't you hurry it up? Just a few more seconds, Mr. Leonard. Haven't you birds ever thought of inventing something that would develop films fast? Time's up on them. Pull them out, Pete. Pull them out. Give them to me. Here they are. Let me see them. More light. I need more light. Okay. How do they look? You've done it. You've done it, kid. There's the cop falling, see? Here, the bandits are climbing in the getaway car. Their faces. We'll be able to identify every one of those birds. Nice pictures, kid. Thanks. Now get them on the enlarger, Pete. Send a second set to me. And hold on to those negatives. They're worth plenty. Come on, you. Wait a second. How about our deal? Didn't you say you'd never worked on a newspaper before? That's right. Well, you're working on one now. You're the journal star photographer. 30 bucks a week. I'll try to do a good job of it. It means a lot to my wife and me. You keep on making pictures like that, and we'll have every crook in the state in jail. I'll get you plenty from the news service on this one, kid. How much? I'll ask for $1,000. All right? All right. Yeah, oh, right. yeah, all right. But uh, could I have a few bucks in advance? Huh? What for? We haven't eaten for 24 hours. <laughs> Those are your pictures he's yelling about. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a funny feeling. Dig into that steak, honey. Joe, you think we ought to go out and buy a paper? What for? We bought six already. Well, those are just to look at. We need one for the scrapbook. <laughs> I'd rather have another steak. You know, Joe, if we can afford 40 cent steaks... Maybe that 15-room house we were talking about isn't such a crazy idea. Well, if you've got nothing special to do tomorrow, take a look at some lots. <laughs> I'll bet someday you're going to be famous, Joe. Like President Roosevelt. Oh, he's in a different line from me. Of course, i got a big job, too. Oh, it's more than just a job. You've found a place for yourself. At last, you know that you belong. You know, that's even more wonderful than anything else. Belonging. Yeah, yeah. I guess it is. But make that we belong. I couldn't do a thing without you, Mabel. And don't you forget it. Mabel and me were sitting pretty then. But I guess I ain't supposed to get the breaks. Not for long. It happened right after I got the pictures of the Venetti mob rank robbing that bank. I came into Leonard's office one morning and he told me the Southern Press Association wanted my picture and a story. Well, how could I? I couldn't have my picture going into every paper in the country. I told Leonard that, and I told him why. That a murder rap was out against me. He never turned a hair. He rung the Southern Press back, and he told him he was the guy who took the bank pictures. Then he wanted to speak to Mabel. 
So I took him over to our pop. No, believe me, Mr. Leonard. Joe never killed my stepfather. The last we ever saw of him, he was running after us. And that's true, every word of it. I believe you. And I believe Joe, all the way. What I can't figure out is why you didn't go back and give yourselves up. Joe can answer that. Because I know nobody would believe us, that's why. I'm not so sure of that, Joe. I am. I've been on the short end too many times to think different. You're one of the few guys that ever gave me a real break. You and a guy named Nick. I don't think I would have minded so much before. I was kind of getting used to moving on, but... Well, now, this is the first time Joe and I have ever had a place of our own. I mean, you know, sort of a home, and... Well, it made us feel like... Like we could keep on living like everybody else for a change. You're going to keep on living like everybody else. Oh, but they'll find out. Not if I don't tell them, they won't. Oh, Mr. Leonard. Now, now, look, Mabel. I didn't come up here to make you cry. Stop it. Hello? Yeah, it's for you, Mike. Hello? Yeah? What? That's great. Hold everything. I'll be right down. That was the office. They just got a flash. Two of the bandits were captured. The leader got away. They want the general photographer to identify him. And that's me. But you didn't take him, Mike. Well, you can't afford to get mixed up in this. But supposing they don't believe you. Who's going to ask any questions? The pictures are enough to identify him anyway. I'll convince them. Good night, Mabel. Good night. So long, Joe. See you in the morning. You still want me to work for you? If you don't show up at 8 o'clock, you're fired. So long, kid. Did you... Did you hear that, Mabel? Yeah. I can't get over it. Me, getting all these breaks. Me. Joe Bell, tramp. You were never a tramp. I know what I was. I still got cinders in my hair. Trains still whistling my ears. Now I'm getting a break. And a home. Yeah. Come here and look. What, Joe? Out the window. You see all them stars? And the moon? Yeah. Well, maybe you know it, too. But we're sitting on top of them. Yeah. I guess... I guess if we had a baby now... Yeah, what? We'd have just about everything we could ever want. A baby? Well, that don't sound like such a bad idea. A baby? Mm -hmm. Joe... Look. What? Isn't that Mr. Leonard down there? Yeah, but he didn't bring his car, did he? No. Joe, look at those two men. They look as if... Wait here, I'll be right back. No, Joe, wait. Don't you see what it is? They got a gun in his ribs. Joe, be careful. They may be the gangsters. Joe, they'll kill you. Get in the car, Leonard. I want to have a talk with you. With that gun? No thanks, Vanity. I can hear you and your boyfriend just as well out here. <laughs> You're a very handy guy with a camera, Mike. You get your information fast, don't you? Yeah, and I move fast, too. Now, look. I got ten grand here. It's yours if you don't identify my friends. I can make more than that writing a book about guys like you. Fifteen grand. You're wasting your money. All you got to do is turn over the negatives. What do you say, fifteen grand? I'm not interested. Well, glad to have seen you, Vanity. You ain't going nowhere, Leonard. Get in the car. Get in. Okay. Wait a second, mister. What's the rush? Careful, Joe. Who's this guy, Mike? Get out of here. Thanks. I'll stick around. Get off that one on I'll Step out of there. No, no, you don't. Joe, look out. Get off the car. I'll take that wheel, buddy. Let go of that wheel. Hang on, Mike. You want a record? Sure, why not? Keep it moving now. Joe, Jack, look out. <laughs> I watched the whole thing from the window. It was horrible. I thought they'd killed you. Take it easy, Mabel. It's all over now. I'm all right. But there's nothing wrong with me. Is there, Doc? Nothing much. Your husband is a very lucky young man. Oh, how's Mike? Swell, swell. Just shaken up, that's all. There you are, young man. Leave that bandage on. You can go now. Thanks, Doc. Come on, Mabel. Let's go home. Here he comes, guys. Hey, how about a picture of Joe? Joe? Close that door, quick. What's the matter, Joe? Those guys... Just snapped my picture. The news service will pick them up. By this time tomorrow, they'll be in every paper in the country. Joe, we're... We're trapped, aren't we? No, we're not. We'll be out of this town in a half hour. Come on. Oh, what good is that going to do? Do you want to stay here and let them take us? Yes. Are you crazy? No, but you are if you think there's any place left for us to run to. You don't know what you're talking about. You just said yourself every paper in this country will carry our pictures. So we'll stay in hiding for a while. Yeah, and then what? Then we'll find a million bucks and buy a boat and take a trip around the world. You're wasting time, Mabel. Joe, this can't go on. It gets worse and worse every time. First, it was only getting over the state line. Then it was attempted robbery. Now you were almost killed. Come on, Mabel. We'll talk about it later on our way out of town. There's not much time. You're wrong. There's a whole lifetime in front of us. And I'm not going to spend it running away. 
We're human beings. We've got a right to live like human beings. You coming with me? No. If that's the way you feel, I'll go it alone. You're not leaving here. Get out of my way. Joe, please. I'm getting out of here. I swear you won't leave without me. Hey, Joe, how about another one? Don't forget us, Joe. Joe, Joe, listen. Don't make me do it. So long, Mabel. Stop him. Stop him, somebody. What's going on here? What is it, lady? This is Joe Bell, Sergeant. He's wanted for murder at Rosedale Work Farm. He wants to give himself up. Oh, Joe. Joe, you'll see it'll be the best thing. You'll see. Well, that's all there is. They brought me back here to face trial. And here I am. What I've been telling you is the truth. I got no reason to lie. Why should I? It wouldn't do me any good if I did. I'm a nobody with a capital N. That's it, Judge. Quiet! Quiet the court! You can step down now, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Joe Bell has summed up the issue in this case far better than I could. He's right. He is a nobody. But there are an awful lot of nobodies in this world... And if they were all to be judged on that basis, then the whole system of American democracy that we believe in is hollow. That's why this trial is important. Just a minute. Is counsel summing up? No, Mr. Prosecutor, I'm not. I have one more witness to call. She'll make you understand this boy. The only way you'll ever feel or know what's in his heart is to have the person nearest his heart tell you. Call Mrs. Mabel Bell to the stand. Mrs. Mabel Bell! Place your hand on the Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you? I do. Will you take the stand, Mrs. Bell? Just start talking, Mabel. Tell us in your own words about Joe. Well, I haven't got much to say. Only like Joe said, when he, when he got his job at the journal, he, he felt he belonged. If I could only make you understand what that meant to him. He wanted a place to hang his hat, and he had it. He was happy, but now... Go on. He... He wasn't at all like the boy you saw get up on the stand. He's bitter now. He thinks he hasn't got a chance in the world. That nobody cares. That he's wrong. You've got to prove to him he's wrong. I believe you will. If I didn't believe it, I... I wouldn't have turned him in. Just take it easy, Mabel. He hates me for it. You know, it's not easy for a woman to have a husband hate her. Especially... Especially at a time when she's going to have a baby, but but I couldn't help it. I just couldn't go on running away anymore. I'm asking you to believe me when I tell you that my stepfather was a sick man. Joe didn't kill him. He hit him, yes, but, but he had started to hit me. You see, whatever Joe's done, it was because he loved me. And if you have to convict him, convict me too, because, because then I'll have to believe what he does. But there's no hope for people like us. And I don't want to believe that and go on living. Your Honor, the defense rests. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. The defendant will rise and face the jury. What is your verdict? We find the defendant, Joe Bell... Not guilty. Mabel, hmm? I just thought of something funny. What? You know, this is the first time we've been on a train together where we actually paid our fare. <laughs> this is the first time we've ever been on a train when we, when we actually knew where we were going. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And Joe, and something else. I know what you're going to say. What? We finally found the place to hang our hats. My hat, your hat, and Joe Jr.'s. The curtain falls, and the train rolls on to happiness for Joe and Mabel Bell. And we introduce our stars for a curtain call, John Garfield and Claire Trevor. Well, now that we're through hitchhiking around the country, Mr. DeMille, I, 
I want to tell you that it was a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to work with Claire Trevor. Well, thank you, John. I've enjoyed it, too. Mm, you played a very authentic bindle stiff, John. Sounded like you had experience on the road yourself. Well, yes, I did. I've done a little traveling while I had a ticket. You know the way, a big smile and go my way, buddy. Matter of fact, that's how I first saw Hollywood. <laughs> I came in on sort of a shoestring myself. Hey, what is this story, John? I, I thought you came out here after a big success on the New York stage. Well, not the first time, Claire. I came out after a big success in a Nebraska wheat field. <laughs> Just big enough so I can continue my trip from New York to Hollywood by thumb and eat on the way. It was certainly the most solid kind of research for your part tonight, John. Yes, sir. And I certainly had a lot of fun before I finished my grand tour of the United States. And with a little urging, I bet you'd do it again. But before we say goodnight, Mr. DeMille, I'd like to tell you again, as I have before, that I think Lux Soap is a grand soap. And I know there are millions of women who back me up in that. They know what a help Lux Soap is in keeping their complexions soft and smooth. Mm. Dust will not be the destiny of any complexion that knows Lux Toilet Soap, Claire. <laughs> Uh, what's coming up on this stage next Monday, Mr. DeMille? A great play and a great cast, John. The play is The Letter by Somerset Maugham. And our cast is headed by one of the finest actresses of these or any other times, Miss Betty Davis. With Miss Betty Davis, we present the same stars who, the same star who appeared with her in the Warner Brothers picture, Herbert Marshall. The Letter is the story of just a few weeks in a woman's life. Relentless, dangerous weeks, so sharply presented in this drama and so finely acted by this cast that I firmly believe you'll remember next Monday night's play for many months to come. Oh, it's one of my favorite plays, Mr. DeMille. I don't want to miss it on the air. Well, good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. That applause you hear echoes from coast to coast. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Betty Davis and Herbert Marshall in The Letter. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. John Garfield appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, as in currently seen in their production of The Sea Wolf. Claire Trevor was heard tonight through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures, with whom she has just signed a long-term contract. The novel, Dust Be My Destiny, was written by Jerome Odlum. Included in tonight's play were Arthur Q. Bryan as prosecutor, Rex Heath as judge, Tony Martelli as Nick, Earl Ross as Mike, Pat Collins as Pete, and Paul Irving, James Eagles, Edward Arnold Jr., George Yesner, Speck O'Donnell, Bruce Payne, Adelaide Irving, and Earl Keane. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.